What is up everyone, today I'm going to show you how you can make your renders pop by implementing Bloom and Volumetrics. If you want to improve your Blender skills be sure to subscribe and give this video a like for more and also comment how long you've been using Blender for, I'm curious to see. Alright enough rambling, let's get on with the tutorial. Alright so the first thing I'm going to show you is how you can set up the Bloom, so that's this really cool effect on the lights here. So if I toggle between the images you can see how it really makes it pop and stand out quite a lot more. So I'm going to show you how to set it up in Eevee first. So it's extremely simple, all you have to do is go over to this panel here in the uh, render properties panel and enable the bloom checkbox and you'll see just like that we get bloom in real time so that's pretty cool. For cycles it's not quite as simple as a checkbox but it's still pretty easy so all you have to do is go to the compositing tab and add in a glare node so I've already got one added here but you would just go shift A and search for a glare node and then what you want to do is change it from whatever it will be to fog low and then you can go and drop that in and yeah unfortunately it's not real time that's to be expected but after your image renders and it does the compositing it'll uh, add the bloom then so one thing to note is that if you're not seeing the bloom effect make sure your lights are actually turned up uh, high enough on their strength value otherwise you won't actually see the bloom Alright, so now I'm going to show you how to set up the volumetrics. So the first thing you want to do is add a box for where you want the volumetrics to be. So I'm just going to go and add a cube. So now what you do want to do is size this up. Uh, because this is where your volumetrics will be as I said earlier. So everything that's within this will have the volumetrics. So just shape it roughly to your scene. It doesn't need to be too big as long as the main objects uh, and most of your scene is uh, encompassed in it. So now what you want to do is go and add a material. So I'm going to hit new and head over to the shading tab. So now we can delete the principled BSDF node and add a volume scatter node. So you can just search for it there. And alright, so the first thing I'm going to do is plug this volume output into the input here. So now, as you can see, there's some stuff we can play around with. So we've got the density, that's pretty self-explanatory. Normally you'll have it on a pretty low value like this. And this anisotropy, this is like the direction of the scatter basically. So you can have a play around with this until you get something that you think looks good so I'll go to rendered view now and I've got it turned down quite low so you might not be able to see it but as you increase the density it's gonna get a lot more dense Oops. alright so as you can see this is still quite basic so what you can do is instead of adding a volume scatter node you can go and add a principled volume node so you can probably tell this has got all of the same stuff our volume scatter has except we've got a ton of extra stuff we can play with so we can go ahead and swap these out I'll plug that in there and change the density and anisotropy okay so this is all well and good but you don't just want to leave it like this it's a good idea to add some variation so there's plenty of ways you can do this for example you can add a noise node to break it up so I'll show you what that looks like so you can go and add a noise texture and now you want to add a math node there we go Drop that in there and set it to multiply. So now we can go and plug in the color into the first value and in the second value we want to put our density. So I'll put in that there 
and all right so now we can plug that into the density and you probably can't see in the viewport uh, but if I increase it uh, it's a bit much you, you'll see that the noise texture is actually affecting the density in the different areas especially when you render it you can also do a similar thing with a gradient texture for example so I'll go shift A and add a gradient and drop that in there so same procedure connect the color to the first value and now if you have the node wrangler add-on enabled that's uh, free built with blender so you can just go and enable that and select the gradient texture you can hit control T and it will add a mapping and node and a texture coordinate node so you can go and play around with these values to get the gradient looking like what you want so you can click on the gradient texture and hold control and shift and click and then you can see a preview of what it's going to look like you can see the gradient there so if you tweak these values here then it'll end up changing it as you can see all right so if you want to uh, see the final output just go and control shift click on the principled volume all right so one thing to note is that cycles is able to do a lot of optimizations when the density is consistent but if it's not like for example if we had a gradient or a noise texture uh, a lot of those optimizations can't be done which will result in render time skyrocketing typically so what you can do to help with that is go to the volume panel and you can increase the step size so you can see I've already done it uh, typically somewhere from 5 to 10 is normally pretty good and you can also play around with the steps uh, so that will help you get those render times down so you can just play around with it one other thing to note is that EV doesn't have much support for volumetrics uh, with the most notable issue being uh, it will only use the bounding box for example if I go and add a UV sphere here and I'll go and add our basic setup so add the principal volume node and plug it in so you can see it's, uh, it's respecting the shape of the sphere here but if I go and change the rendering engine to EV you can see it's not really a sphere it's more of a cube because that's what the bounding box is so uh, that is a bit unfortunate but that's just the way it is you do however have some more options in the volumetrics panel though uh, as you can see uh, notably the light clamping which is probably uh, the most useful there and uh, do make sure that this is actually enabled if it's not enabled then uh, you might have some issues that's all for today's video if you learned something new be sure to subscribe like the video and drop a comment because it really helps the channel out and i will see you in the next video